Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. Next 10 minutes, what are the weapons we must have as we engage warfare? My greatest body in this time. That's why I'm not, I'm not ascending. <laughs> I decided deliberately not to ascend. What I'm just trying to tell you today is obey God. That's all. Just be obedient. I'm just using words. I don't have time to start. Just be obedient. And you will eat the good of the land. That's all. Praise the Lord. And so when God created the man, in Genesis 1, 28, he said, let them have dominion. So a man who has won the battle, the proof is dominion. Any area of your life where there is no dominion, it means there is warfare. And every time there is warfare, you are out of God's will and you are out of God's abundance. So a man who has prevailed in warfare has a seal. It's called dominion. Because when he created the man, he said in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And he said, male and female, he made them both. And then he went further to say, let them have dominion. And he outlined all the spheres of life, the air, the water, and the land. So when you see a man not walking in dominion, that man is in warfare. Because warfare comes to challenge your dominion mandate. The moment your dominion mandate is questioned, you are in warfare. And you need to know what to do to come out of it. Because we were not created to struggle. We were not created to walk in lack. We were not created to be sick. We were not created to be troubled. We were created just to enjoy God and to walk in the of his realm. Every time it is compromised, we are in the middle of a warfare. And now what do you do in order to continually prevail? Number one is to walk in divine revelation. Any area of your life where you lack revelation, you are already defeated. The only reason you think you are comfortable is because battles have not come. And the reason battles have not come is because the devil has a timetable for everybody. And so the proof of victory is not just how you feel now. The proof of victory is the revelation you are guarded with. Every area of your life where there is no revelation, wait until battle comes. You will know that you were already defeated. Be it your health, be it your family, be it your business. Your business is not doing well because you have the right contacts. It can crumble overnight. You read the scripture, you will see it. Job, the Bible said, was the greatest of all men from the east. Everything shut down. What keeps you in victory is the revelation you are working with. And so, because we are in a treacherous season, everybody must be guarded with revelation for every aspect of his life. Don't leave your family porous and just say um, things we walk, that God is in control. God is not the only being in control. Adam has opened the realm to other spirits. Because if you think God is in control, then you will blame God for all the evil in the world. Because if God is really in control, then he's doing a bad job. There is what we call sovereignty and there's what we call power of Anthony, delegated authority. God has sovereignty, but delegated authority is with man. And man has handed it over to devil, to the devil. So God and the devil, are walking 
parallel governments on the face of the earth. That's why when Jesus was on the mountain of temptation, the devil said, bow down to me. I will give you all things for it has been delivered unto me. Make no mistakes about it and leave your family porous and say God is in control. If you don't guard it with revelation, the devil will show up. Don't leave your business and say God is in control. Don't leave your children and say God is in control. There must be a revelation that creates a seal around it. So in Ephesians 4.27, Paul said, giving no place to the devil. If you do, he will exploit it. Because Adam handed an authority to the devil. And so the first way to walk in victory and in dominion, which is the testament of victory and over warfare, is to walk with revelation. And there are four things you will have handy when you are walking with revelation. Number one, is that you must know that the word of God is God's final authority. If you don't have that revelation, you will build your future on somebody's promise. But you know, it has already been judged that woe unto the man that puts his trust in the arm of flesh. There are many people today, they put their confidence in another man. My uncle, my auntie, my friend, you have not walked life long enough. When you walk life for a while, you will discover there is no such thing as my auntie and my uncle in destiny. Anybody that helps you is because God moved him to help you. So your confidence is not in the person, it's in God. And those who are making impact, they know it. And so many breakthroughs in their life, the people that orchestrated it, they don't even know them. A man is seeking contract. He has no connection. He walks into the office and somebody looks at him and says, what do you do? Favor just shines upon him because and not his, the Spirit of God has illuminated him. And the man goes out of his way to make things work for you. And then you leave that place, you never meet the person again. He is not even interested in your thank you. Meanwhile, somebody else who doesn't know the way of victory has been calling one man for one month. If you will spend half the time you use in calling that man to call on heaven, you will be shocked that that man you are trying to call will lose his sleep. Because when heaven calls him, he can't say no. We don't build our confidence in the world. That's why we struggle. And that's why demons still manipulate us. When a man builds his confidence on the world, when a man enters a revelation, that the word of God is God's seal of approval. That man's life will be on a cruise. This is the way of the apostles. In Mark 16, 20, he said they went from place to place and the Lord confirming the word. The Lord wasn't working miracles with them because of sentimental connection. There were no miracles in their lives because they were apostles. There were miracles in their lives because they built all they were doing on the world because they know the world is the reference point of God. And he said, the Lord confirming the world. That business you want to start, what is the world you have? That family you want to start, I know you love the lady and you have said a lot of things on phone at 12 midnight. You have used a honeycomb voice and everything has been set in motion. But have you secured the world? Because an evil day will come. That's what we call warfare. That career you want to pursue, have you secured the world? You have not realized that this earth has no true foundation. They say the earth is on water. And so you can't bank on anything that is earthy. I'm telling you why many fail. This thing is beyond impartation. It's beyond prophecy. It is a walk with God that brings you to a point where God rigidly commits himself to you because he gave you his word. And he can never deny his word. In Psalm 138 verse 2, he said, God have exalted his word above all his name. You want to know that thing that we always challenge the credibility of God is his word. If a man can believe the word of God, God can stand from his throne. If that is what it takes to 
get it done. But many people are in warfare and they are talking things they heard other people say. That's why there are too many casualties. Many people are trying to make a headway in life, banking on what they heard other people say. Your life is too important for an experiment. In John chapter 10 verse 35, Jesus was speaking. He said, He said, Ye are gods unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. That's when Jesus said cannot, it means nothing in the whole universe can stop it. But many have not had a revelation of the world. They have had revelation of people. So you hear that this person is a bank manager. He owns Oceanic Bank. And because of that, you want to kill yourself. They tell you this person owns an airline. And because he owns an airline, you sign off your destiny. And you are waiting for the day he will show you mercy. <laughs> you may wake up when you are 78 years old. And then you discover that the word of a man is not a legal tender in the spirit. When God speaks, even if all men refuse, stones will rise up to perform it. When God speaks, even if your own father disappoints you, he can cause the wind to bring quails to your camp. Nothing will be there, yet it will be done. And then you will see the excellency of his power. In Matthew 24, 35, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, not one jot or tittle of my word pass away. That is God giving you an information, a strategic information. I'm sending you to the earth because before you were formed in your mother's womb, I know you, I knew you, I ordained you and I sanctified you to be a prophet. Now that I'm sending you to the earth, I'm giving you a leakage. Even if everything failed on earth, stand on my word. If you do, you will succeed. That's a code that God was giving to mankind. But I can assure you, the reason we prophesy, we impart people, we pray with people, nothing happens is because they don't have a word that they are working with. People are functioning by assumptions. People are functioning by uncertainties. That's why they are always faced with disappointments. If you want an end to heartbreak, then begin to stock yourself with the word of God. The day you substitute the word of God for every other thing, that day you have made your way to victory. And somebody will not step into 2022 until there is an insurance policy of the word of God released in his direction. You know, the poor man thinks that um, if only he were rich, if only things were working for him, he would have known how to go about his life. He doesn't know what makes the rich man rich. It's the things he who is poor is refusing to do that the rich man is doing continuously that is making him rich. It's not when you become rich you will do it. Most times you come to church, you will find the rich who are legally and legitimately busy seeking God. Some of them come to church, they say they want to be ushers. And then the poor man that has one suit, we iron that suit, he sits across his leg, he wants to create impression. And he has not heard that great men are not dressed in gold. It's when you scratch them, you will now discover they are made of gold. The poor man wastes the time he should use to build himself on creating assumptions and impressions. Why the rich man is laboring and talking himself. So many times when the storms of life come, you discover that the man who is losing is always shy. The one that has death, it is in the middle of the storm that you see his glory. Because God is not going to take the darkness away. The idea behind the darkness is to give you a platform to manifest glory. If there were no darkness on earth, light would be useless. So God is not about to take away the darkness. You are about to receive light. And so by light, we war with darkness. He said the light shines in the darkness 
the darkness comprehended it not. So what you call challenge and you are begging God to take away, God's opinion about the matter is not to remove the challenge. It's to make you stronger than the challenge. So the challenge becomes an opportunity for you to glorify Him. If there were no sick people, the healing anointing would be useless. Many people are trying to, they are conscious of the problem instead of themselves. The problem is not the mountain. The problem is what do you carry? Because that mountain is the reason for your announcement. If God removes that mountain, nobody will know you. Today you speak about Benzini Dahosa and everybody is shouting. But we don't know the reason the name Benzini Dahosa became a household name is because he stood before 28 dead men. It is the rising of those dead men that gave Archbishop Benzini Dahosa a name in the body of Christ in Africa. If those dead men didn't rise, he would have gone in history like every other person. The challenge is not the battle. The ignorance is the battle. And so today, the first revelation every man must have is that the word of God is his final authority. Number two, revelation we need to have about the word is that the word of God is life. God does not only validate his word. The word itself has the power to animate and to produce what he said. If I say be healed, the integrity of God will be invested to make that word come to pass. But over and above the investment of the integrity of God, the be healed that is said in itself has the power to produce in it. Because the word of God is life. When you know this, the word of God for you will not just be a story you hear or will it be a message you write in your book. The word of God will become your asanas that you remove from your quiver to cause things to change. So when you know the word of God is life, you will now begin to administer the word of God like a doctor administers cure through drugs. So you go to your business and your business is not working. Before you begin to complain, you will begin to speak the word of God because the word is life. That's why when God came into the world, the Bible said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. God didn't call the angels and began to complain. He said, light appear. You go to your business, things are not working. You are looking for who to blame or who to call. You don't know the first point of duty is to administer life. When a man understands that the word of God carries life, as he steps into that business, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this business, you are spreading and then you are releasing those words and you don't know what is happening. An invincible investment has been added to the work. You come into your family, instead of complaining, you go to your room and you shut the door because you have life. All you need to do is to put life in the relationship because many times the relationship is dying because there's no life. There's too much corruption in the relationship. And when a man knows that the world has life, he begins to administer the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my home is a citadel of peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my wife understands me. I understand my wife. All things are working together for us because we are the call according to his purpose. And you are speaking these things. And after a while, the family have no choice but to begin to blossom. Your body is sick. I'm not against doctors. Thank God for what they are doing. But how much investment have you put on that body? A growth is coming out of your body. Thank God for what the doctor is doing. But how well have you dealt with that growth? If you knew the word of God is life, you will use the word of God to correct it. There is pain in your body. How many times have you spoken to it? That means you have the word of God in a book, but you don't know what the word of God is. Because the day you know what the word of God is, the first thing you do is to administer the word. You will grow in this consciousness so much so that even when you hit your leg against a stone, you say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I release life. There is no damage. Something is going wrong somewhere. Before things change, you begin to talk. Because when a man begins to use the word of God, things don't happen to him. He makes things happen. Many times, all the word we have is in a book or is in our head. That's why we don't live the victorious life. 
as you go into 2022, nothing passes your way without attaching a word to it. Before you step out of your house, you set words on error. Words go ahead of you. You can level the road before you come out. So accidents will not be in your path, not because the devil didn't plan it, but because you have sent words ahead. And so even though an accident was planned, your words went ahead of you. Your word collided with the accident, corrected it before you came. And so when you came, people are wondering, what went wrong? You changed it before you showed up. That's how we live the victorious life. Warfare is not just religious praying. And then you need that in the morning. Shabba, 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 shabba. He has his place. He has his place. But there are fundamental understandings that we must have. You have not sent the word on error because you don't know the word has life. Before I came for this service, I sent words here. And so the words walk before you come. And if I want to pray for the sick now, I can just make a few declarations. Things will happen. Because the words are walking before I came. And so in John 6, 63, Jesus said, the words I speak are not for educational purposes. I'm not a theologian. He said, the words I speak are deliberate. They are spirit and they are life. So when I want to change things, I inject the word of God. I speak spirit and I speak life. So these words, they are not just a kind of, of speaking or a cliche that Christians use. When you want to find the spirit and the life of God, they are encapsulated in words. So when you want to release the life of God, you release the world. When you want to release the spirit of God, you release the world. But many don't have this revelation. And so they are going ahead of the world. They leave the world behind and they are struggling. What you need to do is to step back and put the world ahead of you and see the operation of life that is in the world. And you will be amazed. You will be amazed how things will change. This is spiritual warfare. And that's why I gave us the background that nothing happening is a coincidence. Everything you see happening are deliberate orchestrations of spirits. And if you want to see God's results, you must speak God's word. Because his word are spirit and they are alive. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, he said the word of God is living. It's not a theory. He said it's living and it's sharper than every two-edged sword. It's living. It's quick. It's sharper. These things are written to make you understand. So that when you carry the word of God, you will know what you are dealing with. When you carry the word of God, they are not just letters. He's telling you what it is. In case you carry it and you don't know what it is, he's educating you that this thing you are holding in your hand is spirit and is life. This thing you are holding in your hand is quick and is sharper than every two-edged sword. So when you are looking for what to make the difference, then you go and carry the two-edged sword. That's why we read this book. To understand what it is and how to use it. David said in Psalm 119, verse 31. He said, I will not forget thy precepts. They have given me life. No wonder he was such a victorious man. He said, by my God, I ran through a troop. He said, by my God, I leaped over a wall. When it's a troop, it's not 20 soldiers. It's not 30 soldiers. He's talking about a garrison. One man can contend with over 800 to 1,000 soldiers. One man. How? There is something he knows. He said, thy war has given me life. When David said, I leap over a wall, he's not talking about defense in our houses. Wars those days are city gates. Some of them are 10 to 15 feet tall. That means there is no obstacle. There is no such thing as obstacle in David's dictionary. Everybody can fail in the business, not David. Because he can leap over the tallest walls 
the tallest obstacles can't stop David. There is no such thing that can stop him. The reason is because warfare don't just come to you randomly. He said, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. That means the devil sits down, studies you before he deliberately creates the kind of battle that comes your way. That's why what you contend with is not what I contend with. But when you have the word, there is no obstacle that can stop you. These are the secrets of warfare. You may be a music minister. Your battle will be to corrupt your soul so that you can bring fresh fountain. Somebody else may be a businessman. The battle will be to dull or dead thing his mind so that he can't think creatively. The battles are different. But the good news is this. The word is a cure for all. to walk. You were born of the world. Therefore, you cannot but have the results of the world. That's why any one of us that puts the word of God to work, we get the result because we were born of the world. In John chapter 1, from verse 11, he said he came unto his own. His own received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God. He said they were born not of the will of the flesh, nor of blood, nor of man. They were born of the word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 and 24, it says you are born of an incorruptible seed. Incorruptible. That means the, the DNA, the spiritual DNA you have, nothing on earth has power enough to compromise it. So when I come against anything, there is an assurance in my spirit that my case is different because I was born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God. There is no such thing as he works for others, he won't work for me. If others fail, not me, I am different. I am born of a seed that cannot suffer corruption. So I'm not hoping that it will work. I'm not begging for it to work. It has to work. It is commanded to walk because it cannot but walk. That's why I say where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what do I start? See, things don't happen to us. I don't know how to say it. We make things happen because we are born of results. We are born of victory. We are born of dominion. We are born of, his, of success. Many times we don't know who we are. Thank God for the family you came from. Whether good or bad, it's not good enough. If you think it's good, it's not good enough. If you think it's bad, it's not a challenge. Because you are made of the best. The only standard by which you can be compared is God himself. You are born of the world. That's why I said in 1 John 4, 17, As he is, so are we in this world in this world not in heaven you are not somebody hoping to succeed you are success happening you are not somebody that trials is about to break no you don't break you succeed you excel you win that's how you were born you were born like that you are an offspring of the world so next time you share the word of god next time you use the word of god be confident you are speaking your native language. That's who you are. And finally, 
all things were created by the world. That means everything have no choice but to understand and to obey the world. If that chair you were sitting, you are sitting on were not created of the world, then the chair will have the right to disobey the world. It would have been possible for the chair not to understand. But even the chair was created of the world. The situation you are looking at, he said all things. John chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2. He said in the beginning was the world. The world was with God and the world was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. If all things were made by him, it means all things understand him. And if all things understand him, it means all things obey him because he is the Lord. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1, he said, God who had sound three times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the father of the prophet has in this last day spoken to us by his son who being the brightest, the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, he now went somewhere. He said, upholding all things by the word of his power. Everything is upheld by the world. That's why everything obeys the world. Your health obeys the world. Your business obeys the world. The earth itself obeys the world. There is nothing that exists outside of the circumference of the world. And so next time, anything going contrary to the word of God, you become the administrator over that thing. Bring it back to alignment. Because the foundation of warfare is disalignment. When your business is going outside of what the world says, be bold to bring your business back. Because even your business is sustained by the world. When your health is going out of alignment, use the world to bring it back. Because even your health was created by the word of God. When your children want to go out of alignment, use the world to bring them back. Because even your children were created by the word of God. All things are sustained by the word of his power. This is the basics of warfare. There are complex matters about warfare. But if you don't know these basics, you can't even begin to do business in deep waters. Can we bow our heads and pray? And ask the Lord to quicken our hearts with the consciousness of the world. Listen, many people take truth for granted until they are in trouble. And then they begin to scavenge for truth and they can't find it anymore. Many people take truth for granted until the evil day come. And then they begin to look for everybody that knows truth, hoping that truth will come. You are not supposed to look for it when there is an emergency. You are actually supposed to live in it so that you enjoy life. Don't wait until your health is challenged before you begin to find out the truth about healing and hope that it works for you. Don't wait until you are 38 years old before you begin to hope that favor may come. Don't wait until the business begins to crumble. While you are yet succeeding, walk in the light of God's word. Walk in that light and then you will see how glorious and victorious your life will be. Your life is not supposed to be up and down. Your life is supposed to be upward and forward. He said in Proverbs 4.18, the path of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. There is no such thing as too much. There is only such as more, 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 because that's the order in the kingdom. But the way to walk in it is by the word of the living God. I pray for you today that the, the Spirit of the Lord will quicken your understanding. He said, for this cause I pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, number one, the riches, the exceeding riches that he made available to the saints in light. Number two, that you may know the hope of your calling. And number three, that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought 
when he rose Jesus from the dead. What he goes to tell you is that, number one, you are walking in abundance. Number two, that abundance is purposeful. It's not a waste. It's according to your calling. And then number three, he said there is a resurrection power at work in your life. That means even if things were to die, with you is the ability to bring it back to power. To, to life. It doesn't matter where you were. Even if you are falling, there is a resurrection power in you. As the word of God comes alive in your spirit today, your family begins to enjoy the resurrection power. As the word of God comes alive in your life today, your business begins to enjoy the resurrection power. As, your, as the word of God comes alive in your life today, your health begins to enjoy the resurrection power and in the name of Jesus the risen Christ everything that pertains to you right now I command them to align with the full counsel of God if you are sick in your body we will just channel our faith towards healing now I have two more minutes to go. Quickly. You are sick in your body. We are about to correct things in people's bodies. Everything that have gone haywire in your body. Everything that have been disaligned by the Spirit of God. Now. Can you just lower the volume a bit? Just focus on Jesus now. One of the greatest warfare that men suffer is in their health. I told you there are complex things we can't share. As we are approaching the end of the age, the devil is removing his weapons one by one. One by one. Four years ago, I was caught up in a vision. And I saw the first weapon the devil removed. It was deception. And that's why today, you see people pervert the things of God and it's normal. Deception comes to rob people of their inheritance in Christ. The cure to deception is truth. Until truth returns, the body cannot be healed of deception. But unfortunately, even the shepherds that are on the altar can no longer say truth. The second weapon that was removed is terrorism. And the idea is to bring fear so that people can no longer walk in the fullness of God's ordination for their lives. The cure to ter terrorism for the believer is discernment. Discernment makes you, because these things are marshaled from corridors of power. You need to know where to stand, where to walk, where to run for you to be saved in this world now. It takes discernment, not governmental power not military power. There are compromises in different quarters. Plagues, terrible plagues. And that's why you hear of all kinds of sickness breaking out as if it's an invention. And the next one that will be open is famine. But they have an issue with the chest too. Around your chest region. Is there anybody here like that? Just place your hand quickly. I cause that affliction. Now I release the healing power of God from its root. In the name of Jesus, that plague ends. That affliction ends. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is healing somebody here of an excruciating migraine. Very excruciating migraine. When it begins, you can't even sleep. Somebody around me here. Who's the person? Who's the person? Mama, you are the one. It's an excruciating migraine that really, really traumatized you for many years. From her, thank you, Holy.
Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm saying the Lord put oil on people's hands. Entrepreneurship. Wisdom for wealth creation. The year we are going into, you need to be wise in your dealing with finances. You are receiving grace to create wealth, literally, to create wealth. Father, whoever that one is, an anointing will come upon at least two of you because the Lord wants to pick you out. It's a radical operation of God's spirit that is about to fall upon someone. The power to get wealth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, right now, please help the sister, right now, the plague of poverty and retrogression is cursed. The power to get wealth. Take! Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just help him so he's not... Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing the Lord take something from somebody's around your upper neck, your up, close to your neck, around your throat, upper part of your chest, on this middle room, close to that, close to that camera there. There's somebody there. There's something like a challenge. Maybe you want to swallow it. There's this serious dip in your throat towards your, your upper chest region. There is an affliction the Lord is removing from there. Who's the person? Who's the person? Just around a circumference around the guy on the camera. Very quickly, I'm trying to round up. Daddy, you are the one. Just put your hand, put your hand on, your, on your neck there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I put an end to that affliction. Everything that has caused restiveness is caused to its root. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His world, what the glory we shed on the way. Why we do his good will, he abides with us still, and to all who will trust and obey. Finally, as I round up, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing a cloud resting on where that door is. Just towards that door, there's a cloud resting there, and the Lord said, it's favor he's putting upon someone you have suffered a lot of heartbreaks you have been you have been you have been men have been cruel towards you but right now the anointing of god will come upon you and it will overwhelm you and the, the favor of god is coming upon you for marital settlement in the name of the lord jesus right now receive that favor receive that favor Receive that favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Where that fan is there, I'm seeing somebody healed of an excruciating back pain. Where this fan is, excruciating. Just take it. Just bend down, Mama. That pain leaves now. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Just bend down. That pain goes in the name of Jesus. Leave her! Yes, touch your toe. Come up. Do it twice you discover the pain is gone in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How do you feel? I'm feeling, there's somebody here, you are feeling something like a weight on your shoulders. It looks as if your hand is literally beginning to affect your hand. I think it's somewhere here. There's a serious weight. As if you can't lift your hand. Just carry your hand up. You'll discover that your joints have loosened. Your joints have loosened. In the presence of God, there's liberty. Thank you for watching this very video we brought away. We believed you were mightily blessed. Contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey. 
and work with God. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And most importantly, share this video with friends, family and the loved ones. We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. And we'll see you in our next video.